Hi everyone, welcome to Production and Operations Management Chapter 7 Supplement. Uh, this chapter mainly discusses about the bottleneck analysis and the theory of constraints. And most businesses have the assembly lines, as you know. Uh, for example, I just looked at here Honda produces these cars and the trucks and etc and they have big assembly lines where the the transformation process happens from one end of the assembly line and finishes at the other end of the assembly line and a similar situation can happen in a subway restaurant or here I found a, a new example where uh, this is Pittsburgh's, uh, I think, okay, so this is called the Blaze Fast Fired Pizza, and I think it's a very nice concept. It looks like a subway style restaurant where they make pizzas and they uh, based on the customer requests. Again, the transformation process happens from, starts from one part of the assembly line and finishes at the other part of the assembly line. So, what we want to do is, I uh, just wanted to illustrate this assembly line idea and connect that to the theory of constraints and the bottleneck analysis. Here, I just wanted to start with an example of how to make a paperboard. So if you look at it, the paperboard making process requires, and here's a link wiki how, or you could just uh, type how to make a paperboard and get this link and there are 10 steps involved the first step folding in half and then uh, creating a uh, crease and etc it goes in that order where you can stop at this part and make yourself a nice hat but you you may want to do that in the summertime and also you can continue and create your paperboard now assume that this process takes about uh, maybe a certain amount of time and you wanted to produce this paper boats in an assembly line with three workers. And what you have to do is you have to take those 10 steps and divide them among workers and put them on an assembly line. The first worker will do a number of steps and move the half finished product to the second uh, worker and the second worker will do some work and then pass it along to the third one and the third worker will finish the remaining uh, tasks and if you look at it here I just created an Excel worksheet where I said okay let's just say that the first three steps are given to the first worker and then the remaining four as given to the second worker and then the remaining three again given to the third worker now what is now if you have just three workers what is the duration that it takes to make one paper boat now think about this we know that each paper boat will spend the same amount of time in the assembly line but after the first boat you are going to see that one after another there will be one paper boat coming out so what is that time what we call that time as the as a cycle time so there is also another chapter on this which would be a little bit more complicated than this this is gonna be, I think uh, will be covered in chapter 9 in a different style but right now we are looking at it from the uh, most basic idea so let's just start to simulate this and uh, let's say the first worker starts at time zero and it's like the project management idea and this the first worker starts at time zero and because it takes 30 seconds the first worker will finish the task on 30th second and then the second passes along to the second worker second worker starts at time 30 and finishes at time 70 and then the third worker will take it at time 70 and finishes at time 95 so the first boat would be ready by 
time 95. So what we know is now every bullet is going to spend 95 seconds in the process. So what we call this is a flow time and the flow time is 95 seconds. Sometimes this is also called the throughput uh, time. I think your textbook is using that time. And flow time, throughput time, you could just use those two terms. Now let's look at the second boat. Now the first worker, when he is done with the, the first boat, then he's go or he or she is going to start with the they're just building the second boat from a piece of paper and you can take it at time 30 right away and we are just taking it as a continuous number we are not going to start at 31 if we I start at 31 there will be just one second delay I don't want to do that it's just at the same time when you finish and then done by 30 plus 30 60 now here comes the excitement where when do you think that the second worker can start the second boat? Now, can it be at 60? I'm just pausing a little bit for you to understand. It could be 60 if the, uh, the, first, the second worker is done with the first boat at time 60 or earlier, but because he or she is not done yet, so it has to wait for this delay and that has to be time 70 okay so now you're seeing that there's 10 seconds of delay uh, which is required because this guy hasn't finished with the first boat yet now after 70 plus 40 makes 110 and now can this guy start at 95 no because the second person hasn't done with the second boat yet that means he has to start at time 110 and finish by time 110 plus 25 135 and the second boat would be ready by 135 now the first boat it took a uh, 95 seconds to come out but the second boat took just 40 seconds after the first boat. We call this as a cycle time. And the cycle time is 40 seconds for this process. That means we are going to see one boat coming out of the system every 40 seconds. And that's not going to be different. So if you ignore the first boat, this process can produce a paper boat every 40 second let's just continue with the third boat the person is going to start at time 60 and finish by time 90 but the second person can start at time 110 and finish by time 150 and the third worker can start at time 150 and finish by time 175 and as you can see the difference between this two is 40 and this two is 40 and we know that the fourth boat will come out at time 175 plus 40 and this one will come out um, uh, that would may be 215 and this is going to be 255 etc now, how do we know this 40 second? Do we have to do this simulation to determine that 40 second? No, we can just take a look at the durations of each stations and then say that which one takes the longest time? Station two takes the longest time, which is 40 seconds. That means our cycle time would be 40 seconds. And it indicates that every 40 seconds, we are going to produce one paper boat except the first one now if I go back to the example of Honda assembly line the flow time for Honda to make a car is about 18 hours so 
if one car starts from the sheet metal and then is some of the motor components they start the assembly at the beginning and till the end it takes for one car to move through the assembly line 18 hours but does it mean that every car is going to be produced in 18 hours so there will be just one car produced in 18 hours no Honda's uh, cycle time is about little under than two minutes that means if you wait at the end of the assembly line you will see one car coming out of the system every every maybe one minute and eight, uh, 1.8 minutes so that requires every workstation to be right under 1.8 minutes but we know that there are some workstations naturally they are going to take longer than 1.8 minutes so how are we going to make sure that we are going to keep this time at that a level so the answer for that is to have parallel lines so assume that the painting takes about one hour now if one car get in, into the painting then because it's going to take one hour then if you only have one painting station that means the cycle time would be one hour because that's the longest time longest task duration as we have in the paperboard making case so what we have to do is or what Honda has to do is maybe have 10 or maybe 20 or 30 different uh, painting stations where you could just uh, uh, paint more than one car at the same time so that you could decrease the duration of that task okay so there are some other uh, things that the parallel lines and some other examples provided uh, by your textbook and I will be uh, creating an Excel sheet for you and also I will require you to simulate one of the examples provided in the in the textbook so I will do one of those and then I will require you to finish another one simulate and find the cycle time and also find the cycle time using the <clears throat> analytical approach thanks for watching